Howdy, howdy, this is Claire Lawrence. All right, we're gonna be playing with this guy today. I've already got masking fluid on him, ready to go. But I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about masking fluid. Um, I use a product called Fine Line Masking Fluid. And basically it's a product that is used for doing watercolor. So it can, the applications can be limitless, just depending on your imagination. But I thought it might work for alcohol inks and that's why I've been playing around with it. Um, and so what I've done is I've actually transferred it to this kind of a bottle. It's one of those little needle applicator bottles. And the point on it seems to work a little bit better than the point that they apply or they um, give you with the product. Uh, I find it seems to clog up a lot. So I do that and it works well for me. Do it works well for you. And when I go and apply this, I usually do a, a rough sketch on my dragon, or I should say on my canvas, whether it's a pre gessoed board or uh, some Yupo paper or something like that. Usually alcohol is like slick surfaces. So that's how I go about approaching that. So anyway, I'm gonna check on the chat and see if anybody is here and so I can say hello. I usually give it a couple moments for people to start coming in. Um, Mikey ran downstairs real quick. <laughs> so let us see, okay, come on. Live, current live streams, no, that's not to be pleasant. I'm new to this, so bear with me for a little bit while I try to keep things worked out. Um, oh good, Mikey's here. He can fix me. <laughs> can you pull up the chat for me? That would be awesome. You betcha. Okay. And it is plugged in, so I might like make life interesting. So I saw a piece of art done. I couldn't... And I've got my volume all the way up. <laughs> so, whoops. A uh, piece okay. of artwork done recently where it had very light, light tones in the background. And then the subject matter, they used more the, the neutrals and a little bit of hints of color. And I wanted to try that because I'm usually one to throw in a ton of color. Okay, I can see people now. Janice is in the chat. She says, Claire and Mikey, hi. Uh, it, oh, Eric is at the doctor's office. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but thank you for hanging out. And Claire and Julie and Christine are here. Tim, Belinda, awesome, and Victoria are here. Mikey to the rescue. Yes, right? Always. <laughs> Y'all need a Mikey. Okay. So what I did, and I wanted to show you guys this also. So can you change the camera angle to more down below? So I've got a cradle board here and I went ahead and I drew some lines in ahead of time so that you can see how the colors change. They get a little bit on the transparent side. You get that hint of a green color in there. And I always have some type of paper towel handy just because, it, I mean, it's kind of like pouring out like a really gummy, like latex or rubber cement kind of fluid. And just to get it going, you'll find yourself having to clean the tip a little bit. Um, and then what I'll do is just have lines start to run and squeeze it ever, <laughs> yeah, I know, squeeze it ever so gently. And you can even use the tip because they'll have a tendency to make little bubbles or um, almost like little bulbous kind of deposits. And I use the tip to kind of even it out a little bit. So it's not as bumpy looking on the lines and then just do your lines however you want to do it you can do signatures you can do drops and designs and dots and stuff um you can draw dragons so that is literally what i did with the dragon um drew those lines out put it off to the side let it dry and once it's dry then it's ready for alcohol ink so i'll put this guy to the side Actually, let me add a little couple drops here just for consistency. Why not? Ta-da! And let that 
that dry. Okay. You want to switch it to the overhead? Yep. Okay. We're moving, guys. We're trying different things. We're going to do an experiment next week on the video because uh, Mikey and I have a theory on video that um, a lot of people check in from the phone. And in fact, you guys put in the chat how many of you guys are watching from either computer or phone. Because I know, like, when I'm doing Erica's, you know, moderating, oh, that didn't come out right. When I'm moderating for Erica, I'm, I try to do it from the desktop for one thing. It makes it easier for me to plunk in lives or all the links and stuff. Um, but when I'm just watching lives, yeah, I'll do it from either the phone or the computer. So we've got a couple phones in here. Let's see. What kind of colors am I going to use today? Wait for people to get some notes in on that. Huh. A little tricky to get the angle today. Uh-oh. It's okay, I'm working Can on it. Can you see it? Huh? Does that help? I don't know if it helps or not white piece of paper with a white background. I think that'll do. Let's see. And it's... Just wait. Is it? Okay. That works. Why am I moving the paper? <laughs> okay, that's good right there. Okay. All right, I'll move it just a tiny bit. Laptop. So we got two phones and one laptop. So I know Erica's on the phone because she's at the doctor, so... Ha! I cheated there. <laughs> So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add a little bit of alcohol and just try and be very light with my color. Haha, <laughs> try. We will see. Let's see if I can pick up a hint of another color here. I'm literally using my paintbrush and rubbing it on the side of the, the bottle just to pick up a hint of color. You know, I installed Google Analytics to the website. I was surprised how many people are joining from the phone. Right? Like iOS devices and things like that. I, I, if I remember correctly, it was 66%. Really? Yeah. That's a lot more than I expected. So I wonder if we should make videos more geared towards phone users. Maybe try verticals. I don't know. Yeah. Might be worth it to give them a shot. Yeah. Okay. That actually looks really pretty. Uh-oh. What are you doing? Smog is coming in and she's about to do mischief. So I'm trying to be careful with the alcohol and where it's going i'm not that overly worried about it if it goes into the dragon a little bit i'll just make it work but the alcohol does make the color move i'm almost wondering if i got too much again but we will try just a couple of drops Would you like the screen a little closer? Take a bit right here. Sure. That's not going to interfere with you at all. I'm going to make it easier for me to see, too. Thanks. I'm get busy and start moving some of this color around. Or it's really sticks to the paper. So it should show some of the designs on the background, even though it's very light. It's surprising what will pick up. I mean, if you look at houses that are tone on tone, you can really ch 
see the color differences and even light colors. Let's see if I can get some of this. You gonna head downstairs for a little bit? Yep. Okay. I'll watch the lives. Let me know. Okay. If you need me. Mikey is in the process of setting up the CNC area uh, and the garage. So there's a lot to setting up a CNC, I'll tell you that. Well, the next step will be playing around with the um, program and stuff, trying to figure that out. I'm just using um, UFO paper right now. I like where this is heading. Okay, cool. Hi, Stephanie. Oh, Michael showed up and Jody. Hello. Hey, man, Michael. Aren't you in Georgia? Or at least on your way to Georgia? I love Georgia. That brings happy memories for me. Knew some really good people in Georgia. And I miss them dearly. But I always like to drive there because of uh, the trees. And how tall those pine trees would grow along the highway. Uh, you'd see them all the way from like Alabama going to Georgia and it just we loved it loved the drive it was always gorgeous hey Sue good day mate Almost got it. Well, hey, Stephanie, and welcome. I'm glad you are here. We're playing with alcohol links today, and I'm messing around with uh, masking fluid, which helps me put a design in ahead of time. And then I can play with my inks. So yeah, pastel backgrounds are definitely a, not a common thing for me. <laughs> oh, Jody, thank you very much. That's uh, mighty nice. Alright, so what I usually do with these guys when I'm using them, masking fluid and it goes over my character these are all kind of like little characters aren't they I just go ahead and blend them in I think of it as uh, getting a little bit of a uh, reflection off of some background objects you know how when you see 
uh, pictures of people or even objects and you get a reflection of some color that's near them uh, like say they're wearing a white shirt and they're near something red you'll get a little bit of hint of red on that white shirt when you take a picture it's kind of like that and I kind of like it when I incorporate it into the the piece instead of trying to eliminate it completely seems like it belongs and becomes more uh, cohesive and stuff so I'm just trying to blend that in right now. So we're doing something new and trying the live format. It seems to be working out okay, but I'm also going to continue making what we're calling feature videos, which are bigger and larger projects. Um, so those will be happening. It's been a lot we've been messing around with lately. Trying to figure out stuff. And I'm primarily using alcohol inks today from Pinata. I just grabbed some colors and went with it. Why not? But I'm known to mess around with everything. Because it's here. And I like all the colors. Erica, I guess that makes you and me like a mixed media artist. That's funny. The uh, garage is right underneath me and I can hear Mikey. Oh, crud. There's a little bit of the background right there. Let's see if I can... And pick up a little bit of that color from the bottle. See if I can work that in. A little bit of color. And it went really bold on me. There we go. Arlene and Mahamanam. Nam. I still have a hard time with that one. <laughs> but I know the song you're talking about at least. So that's good. Manamana. There we go. I got it. I got it in my mouth. Okay. That works. Okay. Losuno. I'm gonna work on getting a darker brown if I can. My inks are all out of order and they're a big mess. And I need a vamp to come organize me. <laughs> Erica, can I borrow your vamp? Okay, let's see now. Get some colors flowing down here. So what are you guys working on today? It is nice and it's trying to act like spring around here. Man, it was just like last week we were hitting freezing temperatures. It's all over the place. Let's see, should I do a gray in there? I don't know, maybe. You realize that the, the amount of alcohol links I have would cover my table. I don't know if that's a good thing to brag about or just a sad thing to brag about, <laughs> but it is, it is what it is. Okay, that is a lot more red than I thought. Okay, so I'm gonna scoop off a lot of this red, but I'm also gonna move it around a little bit. And the reason for that is if I can't scoop it all off, at least everything is gonna have a little bit of a tinge, or it's gonna be really pink. Oh, I didn't think about that. Okay. Grabbed rosewood thinking wood. Hmm.
I am super excited about Mikey getting the CNC together. I'm going to work on some designs that we can cut into wood um, and create some unique patterns and cutouts. Uh, but more like looking for engraved designs than anything. Something that can be filled with colors. That's the thinking at least. Ooh, watercoloring with tulips. That'll make you feel like spring. I bet watercolors would be perfect medium for that. Okay, there was not so bad anymore. I'm not I'm not mad at it. I'm okay with this. Bring in some more of that brown. So I thought I'd add some more freckles on our guy. Because those turned out so well the last time. And why not? Let's see. And I got a little bit of alcohol in the cup here that I dip into just to help with moving the ink around. Alright, I'm going to build up color a little bit around here. A little around there. Might add a touch. This is where it gets a little dicey. A little bit of black there. That can either go well or bad. So, yeah. Hope for well. I'm going to build up some shadow right here under the neck and right next to the jawline. So I'm thinking that this is more of a sophisticated fella. Likes classier colors. Kind of chilling out. I have an image in my head that I, I think I dreamed a little bit of la last night and I might give it a try. But it's kind of going down Joe's direction so it may be like more of a color pencil kind of a thing or a, um, an actual pencil drawing than it would be. I could see him, I could see him doing it in the airbrush really well but I don't want to attempt to airbrush and screw it up because first off I just don't have the equipment and so I want to do something that would be more my style. So I was thinking about doing it in either pencil or pen but it has to do with a dragon and a, and a lady. So, but it's more of a symbolism kind. Of, I don't know. I can't give it away without showing you. <laughs> I think I still got to work on the image in my head. All right. I did this the other day. Put little dots of 
gold in the scales and it went around the shape and it still kept the color of the scales but it looked really cool when it settled and dried the bottle. I quickly transferred my bottle over to a needle applicator bottle just so I had a finer point to, to drip from. Because I didn't want to miss my spots like I was doing and I just did still. Okay great. focusing and not talking, sorry. Okay. Now I can breathe. All right, I'm going to move around some of these colors where the gold leaked out a little bit and see if I can get it to look better. So when you're using a brush with alcohol, inks or dyes, as soon as it looks right, hit it with the dryer. It'll kind of freeze it in place. That's basically my secret there. Sometimes you have to do the brush stroke a couple of times to get it to work. Or go to a larger brush if you want something smoother. Which is kind of what I'm doing right now. see what we got here. See if I need any more in another area. Oh, hey, Jillian, I didn't see you before. Hello. I just put it down. There it is. Okay. Is there any other ones? No. Okay. at the top. I almost wonder if I need a little contrast there. He's really prickly here.
fine. You can work on the other parts. Yay. All right, next. All right, I'm changing my alcohol real quick because it got a little bit too dark with the black. It's just like watercolor, you just start by getting your surface wet, but instead of with water, I'm doing it with 91% alcohol. Have any of y'all ever used a CNC before? I'm trying to think of some good projects to do with the CNC and my imagination can go a bazillion different directions. Hey cat! Some of that rosewood. Hopefully, I didn't go too far. It looks like I did. Of course, I did. All right, let's see if we can get this rosewood all over the place now. It's like commitment time. So they talk about art as a, having an ugly step. I guess you could say that's what this is right now. I mean, I'm just putting in the color. It's not looking really pretty, but we'll get there. Yeah, the rosewood color is a pretty color. Definitely. And has a nice little rose hue to the piece. You just gotta be careful if you're not looking for that particular color to be as strong because it can definitely be strong. See how that little bit of color has done all of this already. Now to bring it all together. So you see how the there's a little bit of a green hue to the piece? That is the black that is coming into play. It has a little bit of a green undertone to it. You gotta be careful though, this pitch black uh, from Ranger is uh, pretty strong. So we just got through working in the garage this weekend. Our garage is really dark. I mean, really dark. 
and uh, all we had was the little lights from the garage door opener thing and that was really dingy yep right foundation level or layers um, so we got I had some really nice shop lights that I had in my uh, studio at my old place and we installed them in the garage because we thought it could use it more and it is well lit now so we're all excited him darker definitely it's okay to build up colors you just got to be careful about it it's easy to get carried away if you're trying to go for something light very easy But you can build up on color, so. There we go. I'm happier with that. I gave him more of an eyelid this time. I'm playing around with some variations. And somebody told me in a comment, it's like, all your dragons look similar, but yet they're not. They're different. They're unique. I was like, I kind of consider them all like part of the family, but you know, everybody has their own unique look. But when you get them together, they all look like they're, there's clearly similarities. So, they're all part of the family. I'm going to go a little bolder on the horns here. Just seeing what happens. Hopefully I like it. Breathe. Hey, Evelyn. I just now looked up. Sorry. Let's work in this area. I'm going to try and lighten up some zones. If 
to kind of give them a little shape to them. And I just put a little bit of alcohol on my brush and I'm literally playing with removal of the ink. And then I dab it in the alcohol a couple times and dab it on my paper towel to try to remove that ink that I collected. I haven't picked up any color. I've still got a little bit of alcohol on my brush and I'm just kind of, oops, blending things together a little bit. That there that I added was a little bit of the gold to just put a touch. Maybe a touch too much because it acted like a removal. Hmm. Crap. Let's see if I can bring a color back in. I'm working with some little shadows in here. It'll come together, I promise. Put a couple drops on paper towel next to me and see if I can pick up some color just from that just like I had it like a, a palette so I could just do the ever little bit of touches of color I've never done a paper towel before but you know why not he's almost looking really watercolory like
Right now I'm just adding a little bit of color right there. And I'm gonna make it prettier in a second. Picked up a little bit of black for shadows. That's a lot of brown there. This will make more sense once I take off the masking fluid, I promise. Well, you can mess around with resin or watercolor all you want. I always bounce back and forth between different mediums myself. I'll get on a resin cake for a bit and do everything resin, and then get on an alcohol ink cake, and then get on, do a lot of drawing, and then do a lot of everything. But I always go in waves. about doing a big old horn in the front seems a little bit different than what I normally do so Have anybody ever done anything with your paper towels as far as like <laughs> redoing that and creating artwork with that after you finish using it? Because sometimes the paper towels look really interesting too. It's kind of like drips with resin. Oops. Bump up the shadow a little bit more here, which is always, to me, feels risky. But worth it in the end. Wood burning's fun. What are you trying to wood burn? It depends on the wood as far as wood burning. Um, I found that some woods would smell worse than others. Uh, it also depend on if I was doing a whole lot of, a lot of burning. 
like if you're burning large sections or you're burning burning light skin of the lines this is enough Christine says she draws on pieces of wood, and then and then I'm assuming you would burn after that. We had a an old coffee table that was huge, and I uh, did some wood burning with it uh, because the table was starting to go. Well, let's just say it was going south. And I wanted to do something to give it more life. Darn it, I had way too much wood again. Alright. And so I, uh, I had four horses at the time. And there was a picture I took of them. Where they were at the fence line, and it was, it was kind of remind me of like the three amigos. They were chest to chest, and I loved that picture so much. I thought it would be a fun little illustration, and I did a little illustration of it, and did a wood burning of it, and used colored stains. Um, so my kids had started calling it the uh, horsey table. And so when it was starting to give up the ship and I ended up covering it with resin, they were really upset with me. And they're like, we don't have a horsey table anymore. So that's what started the, uh, the kitchen table for us and me redoing the kitchen table with mosaics. And so we now have a, a horsey table again. Okay, this is, I'm getting happy with this. Right, I think it's time for the eye. What do you think? Hmm. You know, I'm thinking about doing rosewood in the eye. Because I think that would be fun. It would be different. But I think it would be fun. It did come out the uh, the horsey table, uh, the original one did come out really good. I was real happy about it, um, and I I made it so because my kids were younger. I knew it was gonna get loved and abused and stuff like that. And I was okay with that. So I just went with it, knowing that that would happen. Um, and sometimes when you just fully commit, it helps, you know, so you don't get all wrapped up into it. And it was really bright colors in the beginning. I didn't varnish it as much as I should probably have. So the bright colors disappeared after a bit, but that's okay. All right, he's got a bloody eye. Let's see what we can do about this. Find with the eyes, dotting the color on seems to help. Let's see. 
a little bit of brown, try to build it up around it. Nope. Yeah, exactly. I agree. I have my brush in my mouth because I'm pouring stuff. Sorry. Yeah, my boys gave me a hard time about the, the big mosaic horsey table because it was in the studio forever. I was like, are you ever going to get that down? Uh, maybe. So how big is your project that you're doing as far as wood burning? Is it like a, a table set up or is it plaques or... Fire, uh, yeah, it is kind of a fire. I wonder if I should do a little bit of yellow in there. Or would the yellow just be completely out of place? All right, let's risk it. Do one little drop of yellow. I give you forewarning. I think my dad's outside and he could come up not knowing that there's a live going on. <laughs> so this is going to be interesting. <laughs> oh, plaques for now? That's cool. Yeah, they've come out some, with some really nice little line um, art uh, or that nibs and stuff where you can get really fine details. So that ought to be cool. Right, that works. Now I, I need time to put some drops. <laughs> Let's see. I usually use these paper plates for putting colors on and then dipping into it and I didn't get my paper plates out ahead of time. And I like them, they're the kind that are coated and I can leave little bits of um, alcohol and ink in there and let them dry up completely and just by adding a little bit of water to it, I can reactivate it and just continually uh, dip into it. I just realized my dragon has kind of an eyeliner. <laughs> He's fashionable. Oh, extra pieces of wood in home? That's cool. That's very cool. Endless supplies of resources. Okay, I'm going to try and do my little drops of gold into the scales. Hopefully I don't screw it up. No, we're going to think positive. We're going to do this right. Let's see. It gets a little hard to see. Oops. So the drop wants to come out immediately. So it gets a little hard to control sometimes. Just like that. All right. I'm gonna go with it. All right, that plan's not gonna work. Alright. 
bummer. Sometimes I even flub up. Actually, a lot of times I flub up. Who am I kidding? I think I just painted my shirt. <laughs> Ew, I did not mean to do that. I think what we're going to do is put some color down somewhere. Ooh. Aha! Here's a plate. Yay, I can use it. See? I've got plates all over the place like this. And if I pour some gold here, that way I can dip it with a brush and just transfer it a little easier to the spots. Gonna pick up some blue. I'm not careful. This is not working how I wanted it. I'm just picking up another color, some of that rosewood color, and we're just intentionally going to paint the scales as color. The cool thing about the masking fluid is, yep, I can be a little messy if I want to. At least the red eyes are going to make a little bit more sense now. I'm not 
not worried about the red getting washed out because I think it adds a little bit of variety to it. Well, those spots are identical, right? holding my breath. Why am I holding my breath? I do have a little bit of this brass and rosewood mixed up together so it'll get a little touch of that gold look to it. Okay, cool, cool. That works. Lines, lines, lines. Trying to blend in any of the red that kind of went over the edge. Now I know it looks like a hot mess now. It's gonna look good, I promise. I'm going to give this a quickie couple of sprays with the archival. And yes, as soon as I'm done with this live, I'm going to leave this room for a little while, let this dissipate. All right, so that is sprayed, and I'm going to put that to the side, let it dry, and mess around with the other one, and then you guys can see how much fun that is to peel up. All right, we got there. So this is the thing I did earlier, where I just threw in a couple lines in there. And I'm going to throw some color on, let's see, quit thinking about it too much. Okay. I'm going to leave some of it a little bit light so that you can still see. You get a little color over there and then back it away.
So normally, if I'm doing a piece, what I'll do is uh, let it dry for a couple hours. Do an archival spray at that point. Give it, I don't know, depends on how heavy I do the archival spray. So I usually give it a couple hours after that. And then I'll peel it up. But a lot of times I'll have a real heavy layer like this on here. So sometimes that can take a little bit to dry. Oh, no worries. Thanks for hanging out with us, Belinda. Okay, so you see how really, really super light this area is and how heavy this is? Once I get through peeling this up, you will get to see that you can still see a lot of line work. All right, and the reason why I put a matte clear coat on here or archival is uh, when I go to peel up this stuff, uh, if there's any residue whatsoever of the alcohol inks or dyes, sometimes they can transfer to your finger, which means sometimes you'll just retransfer it to your white lines. And this just helps that process not be so bad. I know we're far away, so I'm going to get a little closer for you guys. Let's see, because this is fun. So I just use the butt of my thumb. Is that called the butt of your thumb? The little flat part of your thumb? To kind of roll the, the stuff off and sometimes sometimes you can get a nice little satisfying pull out of it and I'm getting it today yay but um, it's a good example so it's really really crisp here and even where it gets real light colored you can still see it so even if you want to have a subtle background and you want to have some definition of something on there or uh, a silhouette or whatever your plan is, you can still get it with subtle colors. Besides that, it's also very therapeutic and a lot of fun. And you'll have a hard time keeping the kids and the hubby and the partners and all the people away from peeling it for you. It's fun stuff to mess around with. It feels a lot like rubber cement when you're peeling it up. It's rarely this satisfying. This is awesome. Yeah, the dragon's not going to be so much. <laughs> There's a lot of little bitty thin lines in the dragon. Let's see. You can see there, you can see gold running through it. And that was just a couple colors. So that works out pretty good. I know, right? Satisfying. Okay, go that to the side, see if the dragon's dry. Then we can get him peeled up. Because <laughs> that's fine.
I got sketchy lines in the background, but in this area here, I did not do any additional lines other than around the dragon. I wanted to explore and see how the sketchy lines looked just by themselves. Sometimes what you think in your head is a good idea. Sometimes when you see it in real life, it's like, well, maybe not. Okay, it's been really satisfying today. Yay. Wah! Oh my. Okay, so the live we're gonna do tomorrow is gonna be a little bit of an experiment. So you guys are gonna join me in and we're gonna actually do a double experiment. Let's just go ahead and throw it out there. Um, one is gonna be on the format and I wanna get your input in on that while we're doing the live and what you think about that. But Mikey and I both have a theory um, on that. So expect a little bit different format but also the subject matter is an experiment too. I don't know if it's gonna work. I did one up ahead of time, so that way I can unveil it because it had to dry. But we will see. I kinda like the sketchy. So you guys saw how sometimes you could see the um, pencil lines when I was doing up the masking fluid you can kind of see it in the background. Sometimes just the process of eliminating the masking fluid will kind of erase the pencil lines. Not all of them, there'll still be some. I'm going to move some of that over so I don't knock it over. That would be the alcohol inks. The unveiling of the dragon. Yes, I'm waiting for the eye to the last part. Everybody wants to see the eye. Oh, thank you, Carol. I am trying. There's a whole lot of experimenting going on in this house. Uh, we were trying lots of new things, trying to figure this out. And get a business started is definitely an adventure. Especially with somebody with not a business mind um, trying to do that. It's really challenging. I'm realizing how much of an artist I am, <laughs> the more I get into this. <laughs> and that's good. I'm getting to know who I am, right? That's a little bit. Okay, let's get down here. These little guys. I kind of like the freckles. I think I may have a freckle series. They kind of make a mess in the thing <laughs> like that. But that's okay. It's worth it. Ugh, more alcohol ink trying to fall over.
There we go. I knew I had more dots so I could feel them. Oh, it's rubbing off some of this alcohol ink. I could feel it. That's not good. Getting closer to the eye. Getting closer. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, it's time. All right, now I got some little dots here. After we're done I'm gonna find a couple it's just inevitable <laughs> and sometimes it's just the look of it from the side so let me bring you guys in actually I'm gonna bring it up for a close-up hopefully it'll focus So I like the little color in the background. I think it works really well with the brown. And the rose would work really well with the reds, or the browns, I should say. I think he was a success. You can see a little bits of hints of gold in there. Hopefully you can see that. You can see it definitely in the scales down below. There we go. You know, that's what the eye is missing. Maybe I needed some gold in there. So there we go. And then y'all got two for the price of one. <laughs> All right. So tomorrow is experiment day. So hang out with us uh, 3.30 tomorrow, and we're going to try a new format and also uh, experiment with some art. So, oh, see, there's some other little pieces. Just got to see it from the, another direction. You can see that I like catching it. Come on, get up. There we go. Yeah, so hang out with us tomorrow. That would be awesome. Uh, check out the website. ClaireLawrence.com for some goodies and some art, uh, t-shirts, and and stay tuned for all kinds of new stuff. Um, oh, it's um 3:30 Central, the time, uh, and we're probably going to be going twice a week, and so that way I can start working on some big feature pieces because I need to get to work on those. So, I will call it a day. Later, y'all. And thanks for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. How do I end this thing? <laughs> Where's that Mikey? Oh, I could bring it down close. Hey, that might work out better. Eee. Nice.